Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bishop Dennis McMurray. I'm the senior pastor here at the Renaissance Church of God in Christ of Grand Rapids, Michigan. And first, it's my pleasure to welcome you uh, to our sanctuary and to stand together on a very important cause. The church has always been a significant place in the fight for civil rights dating back to the 1960s. And we, the members of the Renaissance Church of God in Christ, thought it was only befitting that we welcome uh, this family and we welcome all the persons gathered here together today to be under the influence of the Spirit of God. We need God in these proceedings as we move forward. And it's so interesting that on Passion Week, we find ourselves passionately connected to a situation that requires justice so I welcome you here today, and I'm so glad to say we're here because one of the members of our church, Commissioner Robert S. Womack, asked us to just host a community conversation, met uh, all of the people that are behind me, and today we're going to begin what I believe will be an experience seasoned by the presence of God. So would you join with me today and welcome Commissioner Robert S. Womack the 17th District of Kent County, Michigan, USA. Before we want to ask God to bless us in prayer. Dear God, we look to you today and ask your presence, ask your influence, and your wisdom in these proceedings. God, your word said when we face troubled times, you'd be a very present help. And so, God, we ask that you be that help that that we need, that you be that strength and that comfort for this family as they must relive the difficulty of the moments that they've gone through since April the 4th. God, we know you are a good God. And the question is, is there anything too hard for you? The answer is no. And so, God, we thank you for wrapping your arms around us. Thank you for holding us up when we feel weak, God. Thank you, God, for wiping our tears away and today giving us the blessed assurance that everything will be all right. In Christ's name, I pray, amen. 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 Welcome, Commissioner Womack, at this time. Absolutely. Brianna right. Taylor, George Floyd, Amar Aubrey. Patrick Leoya, from the time we come to this country, the United States of America, which we call home, we've been begging you just to let us live. We've been asking you to let us breathe. They just passed the anti-lynching bill into law. Does it take a law for humanity to understand that certain marginalized communities don't deserve to be lynched, shot, or executed. Right. Mm. I would like to thank our community, the protesters and activists for being peaceful yes. and honoring the family's wishes that Patrick Leoya, those that want to support him, be the change that we would like to see. The world gets a chance to see, as I keep this brief, the world gets a chance to see how in Grand Rapids we are approached by police. Before this officer said, you are under arrest, he began to put his hands on an individual. Never said you are ordered to surrender. Use a taser up close and taking the police training, getting a closer look at that that I've had over the last couple years, we know that if you use it too close, it doesn't really work. So then you can say, the taser didn't work. We can escalate to the next level. But I'm not gonna get into that. I'm just gonna tell you that in my community, I wanna continue to be example to our young people that are, when we are challenged even with violence, don't throw a brick, call Ben. <laughs> I don't throw bricks, but I do build coalitions that tear down racism brick by brick. Amen. I had an honor to introduce to you today 
a person that has been the attorney for Trayvon Martin's family, an attorney for Breonna Taylor's mother, an attorney in the historic George Floyd case, and now he is here. The black attorney general of the United States of America that we call when there is no one else to be a voice for us, when our voice has wrecked the leadership as high as it can in our city, and we're not getting results. All over America, we know we can call the black attorney general of the United States, Mr. Ben Crump. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Womack, Commissioner, uh, Womack, for stepping up. Womack didn't step back. He stepped up. Alishimama. And that's true leadership. Thank you. Thank you for being a voice for this family and this community. We salute you. I'm attorney Ben Crump. Along with attorney Ben Johnson. Attorney Ayana Hatchet. Attorney Robin McCoy. Robin McCoy. Who is the president of the Michigan Black Women Lawyers? And her partner, Attorney Ed Taylor. Na partner wake, avoka Ed Taylor. And Attorney Steve Grimm. Na niko na avoka mwenye waneta Steve Grimm. We have the privilege. Tuko na i uwezo. Of representing the family. Ya ku representi familia. Of Patrick Liola. Na Patrick Lioya. We have present with us here. Tuko na apa Sisi. Sisi. His mother and father. Baba yake na mama yake ya Patrick Lioya. Peter. Peter Lioya. And Miss Adolphus. Madam Dorcas, Mama Dorcas. Dorcas. Yes. Lioya. And they will address you along with their son at the end. Na watazungumza na nyie kwa kumwisho na mtoto wao. They will express to you Watawambia. how very devastated they are Biko. at seeing Kwa kuona. in their words yabu their son executed. Before you hear from them, you're going to hear from Attorney Johnson and Attorney McCoy. Mele musikia kutoka kwa wao, minataka musikia kutoka kwa Avuka Johnson. And you will hear from the mother of Tamika, uh, Brianna Taylor. Na mtasikia kutoka kwa mama yake na Brianna Taylor. Miss Tamika Palmer. Madam Tamika Palmer. Brianna Taylor was born here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Brianna Taylor alizaliwa pa Grand Rapids, Michigan. And her mother and sister did not think it robbery. Na mama yake na dada yake aba kusifikiria kama ilikuwa bali alenda kuiba, baliba, alikuwa kuiba. To be here in their hometown. Ni kufika mwa hii jamaa kwenye walizaliwa. To stand with this family. Na kushimama pembeni ya hii jamaa yeye kona dia saizi. Who is going through? Yeye kona bikuwa na pitisha. Where she had to. Endure. Another senseless killing of a black person in America by the very people who were supposed to protect them. So I want to thank Tamika. For being here today.
Brianna's spirit is in here with Patrick. Spirit. It was very difficult to watch the video. And before I start, we also have uh, the rest of Patrick's family here with us. His, his brothers and sisters, if you were standing. And we have Bishop Gandar and Mr. Freddy, uh, leaders in the Condoleezza community here. Thank you all. We pray with you. This video, video was very difficult to watch because what you see in that video is Unnecessary and justifiable. Excessive use of fatal force. You see a police officer escalate a minor traffic stop into a deadly execution. I want to thank city manager Washington and the police chief Winston for being transparent. Because transparency is the first step to get into the truth. And truth is the foundation for us to get to justice. Justice for Patrick. And when you think about what you witness in that video, you see a confused person in Patrick, Na Patrick who never takes a violent act against the police officer. Na ule na ya police, alikuwa police. Yet the police officer police escalates and continues to escalate Na the situation from a traffic stop. It was a traffic stop. Yeah. Think about it. This wasn't a felony offense. This wasn't even a moving violation. It was a tag, a uh, uh, inappropriate tag, allegedly. I mean, when you think about all the things he could have done to avoid shooting Patrick in the back of the head, just, just Think about that for a second. This officer failed to follow the basic training. When he engages Patrick, he goes and put hands on him. And when Patrick goes to walk away he could have just stepped back and called for backup I mean he had the car he had the passenger in the car 
All he had to do was to call for backup and wait. And this matter could have ended so differently. But yet, he went hands on. And when you look at him, escalating the situation, he was the one being violent. I mean, he committed multiple instances of violence against God. I mean, he kneed him multiple times. He punched him multiple times. Yet, Patrick did not retaliate. Patrick, Attorney Johnson, didn't try to have combat with this officer. He was simply trying to get away. And when you think about George Floyd and other George Floyd na Bengini, atrocities of black people by police, matendo machafu ya police kwa watu wa mtu wa mtu mwausi, you can only imagine what was going through Patrick's mind. Utena kukumbuka kuangalia kitu gani ilikuwa ni ndani ya mafikiro ya Patrick. As he tried to get away from this officer. Wakati alikuwa anatafuta kumkimbia huyu officer. And then instead of calling for backup he takes his taser out and instead of creating distance which is the basic reason you have a taser so you don't have to have close hands on contact you have the taser so you can create safe distance and deploy the taser to do what it is supposed to do. But when you are in close proximity then you are not following the basic training of taser use. As Attorney Johnson and I discussed, it is your natural instinct when you're close to somebody and you go to put a taser, they go to move your hand. And that's exactly what Patrick did. And the officer deployed his taser twice. And that model of taser only allows you to fire it twice. And once Attorney Taylor, you fired it twice. And this is important. Unless you have another cartridge to put in the taser, Commissioner Womack, it is ineffective. So, had the officer been paying attention to his training, he would have known that that taser because he had fired it twice, was rendered ineffective at that time. So there was no reason for him to have any intimate fear of the taser being used against him. However, when you look at the video, you don't really see when he's on the ground that he has the taser. And we're going to look at the video and talk about the video. I'm sorry, we're going to talk about the video in just a moment. It's especially the last 15 seconds. But before I get to that, even after he deployed the taser twice, it 
If he had been following his training, training yake, that would have prevent, presented to him again na tena, tena, another opportunity to de-escalate and call for backup. Na angi what was so wrong about him calling for backup? It wasn't like Patrick had murdered someone. It wasn't like he had robbed anybody. He was being stopped for a traffic violation. But yet, he, he still did not de-escalate. He escalated even further. And he was on top of Patrick. And there is nothing that we have seen in that video to demonstrate that he was an intimate fear for him to engage in deadly force to shoot Patrick in the back of the head. You know, right now, our leaders in the United States of America, we are condemning Russian soldiers for shooting civilians in Ukraine in the back of the head. Why aren't we condemning Police officers here in the United States of America shooting unarmed black civilians in the back of the head. It's a simple question. If it's wrong to shoot civilians in the back of the head in the Ukraine, it is wrong for police to shoot civilians in the back of the head here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Michigan. And when you look at Na wakatu nangalia, the video, iyo video, and I know Mina Jua, you and the media uh, are able to capture muko kapabla kuangalia, muko na wazokona. Our experts have started to capture the video. Na gisi ba expert way to biko banana kuangalia ndani iyo video. Especially the last 15 seconds. Which is the crux of the matter. Attorney McCoy and Attorney Johnson, as we understand that when you engage in deadly force, you look specifically at that time frame while the officer is engaging in the force to determine if it is justifiable use of deadly force. And based on what we see at the point where he shoots the it is clear 
iko clear iko iko ya kuonekana But it is clear. Inata inaonekana kweli. When you kwa macho. When you look at this video. Ukiangalia hii video mzuri. And you all nyie bote. Should analyze it carefully. Na mimi nataka muiangalie na mlichunguze mzuri. Frame by frame. Muiangalie vipande na vipande. You see unaona that Patrick Patrick hand is on the ground. Angalia mikono yake kwa kudongo and his other hand is under him na ingine mkono yake iko chini yake elbow and hand touching the ground na unaangalia hii kude yake na mkono iko nagusa chini the officer na officier is in the far superior position iko juu yake na anaonekana iko juu yake na iko na mamlaka juu yake again he has all the means to deescalate the situation tena iko na ile uwezo ya kufanya hii vitu visifike visibilifika We see no to atone popote instance of intimate force of fear on Patrick. Atone atangamu yoyote kama Patrick atanakuwa niko naleta intimidation ya kusema kuogopesha huyo ofisie. To justify him reaching for his service revolver. Kwenda kujistifia kuangalia kisana kama ta bunduki. Taking it and putting it to the back of Patrick's head. Na kuitia juu ya kichwa ya Patrick, nyuma ya kichwa Patrick. And pulling the trigger. Na kupiga masasi. Blowing his head off. Na kapasura kichwa yake. And so, na ukiangalia kwa hivyo, the video, hii video tuliona shows us inatuonesha that this is as hii gisi iko his mother and father Baba yake na mama yake have said this one is same an execution bana sema ni execution and there's no way na kuna gisi to try to spin it na atuende kusema gisi kuisema justify wala uende unajustifie it is a unjustifiable use of deadly force hawezi kuespikia na walifanya gisi hawezi kuespikia alitumikisha nguvu sana because the police escalated kwa sababu polisi ndio mwenye alianza a traffic stop ilianza kwa hiyo kushimamishwa tu into an execution ufika mpaka kuua mtu kama mnyama and that's why jomana kwa hivyo we are demanding justice na lomba justice juu ya for patrick justice juu ya patrick Justice for Patrick. 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 Yes, sir. Based on what we see in that video, we believe that this officer, we officer should be terminated yes, for engaging an unnecessary excessive use of deadly force and his mother and father and their family are asking that the state attorney Oyo avoka wa 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 charge him to the full extent of the law. Wa mupeleke mpaka mbele ya justice na wa mustaki. For killing their son. Kuua mtoto wao. For breaking their hearts. Kuvunja roho yao. For making his young children. Na kufanya watoto yake orphans. Bakweba yatima. Fatherless. Bakweba yatima. Equal justice requires it. Tunataka justice yenye itakuwa yote itakuwa salamu itakuwa usawa. Equal justice requires it. Justice ya ya yenyeko ya ukweli ita inalomba vile. We look forward to working. Tunaangalia mbele kutumika where well, the leaders of this city. Na kutumika na uongozi ya hii city ya Tarabi to get us through this crisis na kutupitisha ndani ya mashida tupitie shida we pray that the mayor 
Tunaomba kama kiongozi ya ICT City Council na mtu wa kichwa ya ICT and the city manager na sitio ya manager wa ICT and the police chief na chef wa police kiongozi wa police we all have responsible leadership na watakuwa naona maamuzi ya kuongoza mzuri to get equal justice na watupatie justice yenyeko egale na ask for anything special atuombe kitu kingine tunaomba tu justice yenyeko egale just equal justice justice yenyeko egale imagine if this was your child na mimi nataka uangalie kama huyu alikuwa mtoto wako on that video mwa hiyo video what would they tell his children when they grow up kitu gani watambia watoto wake wakati wanakomaa That's why we fight for justice. Because our children are watching. And they need to know that humanity matters. This is very emotional. You're going to hear from my most able co-counsels. Um, and I'm a as uh, to make a problem actually to sit at the table with the family because then you were here from all of them and I know his mother kept confident to me here. right now I give you a great lawyer uh, who hails here from the state of Michigan I've had the true on of uh, working on other civil rights cases with him he is a champion for justice attorney ben johnson good afternoon my name is ben johnson President of Ben Johnson Law PLC. We have law office in downtown Detroit. Downtown Flint. We have 15 lawyers and 40 employees in every single one of them. Are here with me in spirit. And they wish the family our deepest condolences and know that we are that we are in their corner we have your back want to introduce Ayana Hatchet of our office that's A Y A Hatchet H A T C H E T T Ayana Hatchet runs our civil rights department at Johnson Law. And Ayana will be right there with Mr. Crump and me all the way through. Which will entail of course the civil portion of the law. In the uh, early 1960s while I grew up in Saginaw, Michigan. Michigan. Of course I was very young. Martin Luther King said. Injustice anywhere. Mm -hmm. Leads to injustice everywhere. Injustice anywhere. Leads to injustice everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, on Monday, shortly after 8 a.m., when many of us were enjoying our morning coffee, at work on the way to work, dropping kids off at school, whatever you were doing. Patrick was dying. Patrick alikuwa anakufa. Patrick was dying in what can only be described when someone was shot in the back of the head. As an execution style homicide.
ilikuwa baramua kama mnyama at our firm we say na yeye tunazungumza no justice kama kuna justice no peace na kuta kwa kimya spelled our way k n o w na tunazungumza vile People ask me why did you do that then? Because this family will never truly know peace. If we as a society don't show them justice first. Yes. And we're here to make sure that happens. Yes. This will be called Of course an excessive force case you all know that na hii kweli tutaita kama nitumikisha nguvu ya kupita after miss hatchet i pardon me sir after miss hatchet i and mr crump talk about strategy wakati mie na mama aches na papa crump tulizungumza juu ya strategy likely to be filed in the federal courthouse right downtown na tutaenda kustaki kweli tutafika ndani ya kuu kwa tutaenda mbele ya jije in what one of the major factors of that possible kese is one simple question ni swali tu moja did the officer ule officer at the time when he pulled the trigger wakati alikokota masasi alikuwa anapiga did he have a reasonable fear eske alikuwa anaogopa kweli that his life kusema kama maisha yake was an immediate danger maisha yake ilikuwa inaenda kukua ilikuwa mtanje pale pale that's the test hiyo ndio test hii and i ask you na mimi nawaomba how can anyone be in reasonable fear for their own life when you're on top of somebody kama ayeje tena kugopea maisha yako kama mtu uko huko juu ya mtu when you have both knees wakati unyoko na magoti yote mbili on the back of patrick's knees uko nyuma ya patrick mgongo wa patrick when you have one arm forcing him down on the ground na wakati uko na nyingine mkono mwenye uko yuri yake flat on the ground wakati uko chini kweli or even if patrick pushed up still on the ground and wakati atapata ni zungu alisukuma hivyo alikuwa kinaliki chini patrick had no weapon patrick hakuwa hakuwata na silaha yoyote no gun no knife, nothing. Patrick never threatened him. You hear nothing about words coming out of Patrick's mouth saying I'm going to do this or do that. What you actually saw was Patrick defending himself. So we believe this is crystal clear. There is no reasonable person that could be in immediate fear for their life. Hakuna mtu mwenye kweli atenda kuwa anagopea maisha yake. Hence this officer is guilty. Kama huyu ofisi kweli anasitakiwa. Na iko kufapwa. Ofisi yako kufapwa. Before I turn the microphone back over I hear this everywhere I go. Yeah, ni mpatie micro, ni patie papa cramp micro, niko nasikia fasi yote kwenye niko naenda. Yeah, but then He didn't have to fight. The answer is police are trained to engage in this very thing. That's part of their job and training. Under the law 42 USC 1983. Na kupitia ndani ya sheria mbili you cannot shoot and kill an unarmed man because he resists awezi kupiga mtu masasi mwenye hana bunduki kama jua li resist you will hear mtasikia that they tried to take patrick tried to take the taser away mtasikia sasa kama patrick alitafuta kukamata taser yake And folks I just saw this yesterday. Na mimi niliona jana hii. I watched it 400 times. Niliangalia mara mingi sana. Miss Hatchet Crump and I are going to watch it 4 million more. Na tutaangalia tena mie na Miss Hatchet na tutaangalia na Papa Crump tena sana. We've already hired experts, police misconduct experts. Tushao angaje ba expert ba police ba wanajua kuangalia hii mavideo hiyo kuchunguza. Forensic pathology experts. Na kuangalia wale watu wanajua kuangalia ma kuchunguza vitu kidogo kidogo. And they're going to tell you the same thing I just told you. Cannot be in immediate fear for your life when you're on top. 
and no weapon ever was being used against the officer. So, as it relates to Patrick, on behalf of Johnson Law, Johnson Sharia, we are absolutely proud to do what we've done for well, for me 36 years, and that is stand shoulder to shoulder with Ben Crump and his firm on behalf of Aeolus. It's our pleasure to be here. And thank, you. thank you very much, Attorney Ben Johnson. Here in Michigan. And he is correct. You cannot shoot a unarmed person just because they resist. And you cannot shoot an unarmed person just because the color of their skin. We see it far too many times in America. The unnecessary and justifiable killings of unarmed black people. Just senseless loss of life. Bishop, it's just senseless, senseless, senseless. Bishop, haina maana, haina maana, haina maana. And it's heartbreaking. And that's why we're so thankful to not only us who fight in the court of law, but also those who fight in the court of public opinion, like all those young activists who were marching. We want to thank them publicly. Those young people who refuse to remain silent. And the family thanks the activists for standing up. Thank you. And this young lady, even though she's a great attorney, and in her heart, she is an activist. She's a great lawyer. We're proud to have her working with us on this very important matter in the state where she was born and where she is the president of the Michigan Black Women Lawyers, Attorney Robin McCourt. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, everyone, for being here. So I stand here. I'm the president of the Black Women Lawyers Association of Michigan. We're committed to social justice. Our prayers. And our thoughts are, are we are, we are traumatized by this. Our heart, our hearts go out to the family of Patrick Luelo, and and this is this is this is upsetting. I mean, we're here in America, and this is one of the best countries in the world, but we're constantly seeing genocide by cop for black people, the brutalization of black men, women, and children. Yeah, I first met Ben in, in uh, 2015 at the National Bar Association's uh, annual conference. And when, when we, they were talking about Know Your Rights, they were doing Know Your Rights programming. I was doing programming on what to do when stopped by the police. I'm an advocate for children and I'm a criminal defense attorney. So I've been practicing for 20 years and primarily representing black males. 
niko napigania sheria na niko nashimamia mingi watu weusi mwa inchi tirutuba na ume and i would tell the black males as long as you do everything that you're supposed to do go to school do your homework everything's going to be okay mimi nabambia kama unafanya vitu yoyote kisifa leo unafanya unaenda kwa masomo unasoma unafanya madevara yako vitu vyote vitakuwa mzuri but in america that's not the case lakini hapa america haiko joy yenye iko kitu ya muhimu ile You're not safe. You're not safe like Brianna Taylor. You can't even be in your home. You can't be in your home. You can't be on the street. You can't be in your car. You know, most cops, I think there are most cops that are good cops, but there are some racist cops that are out there. Na mimi nasema kama ba policiers, mimi najua kama kuna ba policiers wenye viko vizuri, lakini kuko ba policiers wenye viko ba racist kule nje. And it's incumbent that we root out those racist cops from our police department. Ni dakwa mzuri sana kusema kubatosha ndani ya departement yetu ya police. When I when I was when I started doing the programs on what to do and stop by the police. Wakati nilianza kufanya program ya kusema kitu gani utaenda kufanya kama police na kushimamisha I would I would talk to the children. I would be in the middle schools. I would do them in the high schools and the colleges and the community centers. Na zungumuza na watoto kuanzia kwa masomo primaire, gardien primaire, unafika msecondaire mpaka kwa université. And I would partner with the police, with the prosecutor, with the defense attorney, the judges. Na natumika na ba policier, na natumika na ba magistrat, na natumika na ba procureur, na natumika na ba juge. And what I would do is it, it's called what to do in stop by the police but it's basically how to survive a stop how na, to survive Na yeye ndakuwa anafanya ilikuwa kusema aye njoo ndio nakutoka hapa mzima kama mimi nashimamishwa na police And what the children would say to me Na kitu gani wa police yeye watoto walikuwa wananiambia You know in scripture they say let the children leave Na kuko fast kwa wanasema acha watoto waongoze And they also say my people perish for lack of knowledge. But what the children would say to me they say attorney McCoy we appreciate you coming out here and educating us about our rights. But what about the police? They say, can you talk to the police and tell them to stop killing us? Now they're not going to be our police was to be cool. That's all we ask for is that we stop being killed in one of the best countries in the world, the one of the wealthiest countries in the world, that we that this genocide by a cop that it stops and it ends right now. Tuko tunaomba kwa hii pei yenye iko ya muhimu iko pei ya kwanza mu dunia yenye iko ya rishi mu dunia. Attorney Crump talked about the Ukraine. We're seeing violation of human rights. We're seeing the Russians that are brutalizing the Ukrainians. Na tuko na papa Crump alizungumza juu ya Ukraine. Sisi tunaona viko wanavuta sheria yote ya mwanadamu na sisi viko wanauua wale wa Ukrainian kupiga masasi mkichwa. They're being brutalized. They're being raped. They're being murdered. They're 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 being torn from their from their homes. They're not safe. Biko bana bapiga, biko bana waua, biko bana bafiole, biko bana matosha mnyumba habo na bana usalama. And we too in America, African Americans, black and brown people, we're not safe. We're not safe in the streets in the car. Patrick was was driving his car. Na si hapa America ni si watu weusi. Atuko na usalama. Patrick alikuwa anatembeza mtu gari yake. Like attorney Crump and attorney Johnson said, he, he was not committing a crime. Merely having an issue with his tags on his car and I, I might add we're in the midst of covid. It's not easy for people to just go to the secretary of state. It's not something that you can just readily do. Na nasema tuko mu period ya covid, haiko tu rahisi kwenda ku secretary of state ukamate plaque ya mpya. And your failure to to go get the tags. Attorney Taylor is here. He handles cases with with traffic violations. We handle traffic violations. We do criminal defense. Your failure to go get the tags on your car should not result in your death. Na kama wewe akwenda kukamata plaque ya mpya, haizi kusema njo inapatia police authorization ya kupiga masasi. So what I say to you is that Black Women Lawyers is here. I've been getting calls from the members. You know, we're 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 strong, 450 strong. We're here to do what we need to do to make this happy happen, to make to make the parents happy, to make this to well, I don't know that they can ever be happy with the loss of their uh, Patrick. But, but to, to wrong a justice that has occurred, to make sure that that this doesn't happen to anybody else's family. 
So I thank you all for being here. I'm gonna turn it back to Attorney Crump. And, and just remember, the children are watching us. The children are watching us and they're watching our behavior. And, and we, must, we must do better. I mean, that's, I'm running for state rep in this, this state in the 32nd district, and that's why I'm running. It's because the children have said to me, we must do better. We've got to do better in this state. So thank you and God bless you all. Thank you, Attorney McCord. Thank you for your leadership. Um, now we're going to have uh, the parents of Patrick and Brianna Taylor all come uh, to the podium if they could. And I'm so thankful to Tamika Palmer uh, trying to comfort Miss Douglas. I will have uh, Brianna Taylor's mother, Tamika Palmer, uh, speak first. And then we will hear from Patrick. Uh, I don't really have a lot to say, but first I want to apologize. Just that we haven't done enough to make sure Patrick was safe. I know what it feels like to lose your 26-year-old child. By the people who are supposed to protect and serve us. We've all seen the video. We, you can watch it a hundred, a billion times. We saw what happened and it's clear what needs to happen. Um, we can't keep letting these people kill our children. The only thing that needs to happen is it needs to be, this officer needs to be arrested, convicted, and prosecuted. And that's from the heart of somebody who fought to get justice for her daughter and still is fighting. Uh, Tamika Palmer. Yeah, I give her a big round of applause for me. And it was profound, and it just hit me, Commissioner Womack. Both Brianna and Patrick were 26 years young when they were killed by police. My Lord. Um, and Right now, we will hear from the father of Patrick, Peter Iola. Thank you so much. I am Peter Lioya. I am the father of Patrick Lioya. I am the father of Patrick Lioya. Patrick Lioya ni mtoto wangu wa kwanza. Patrick Lioya is my firstborn son. Eh alikuwa na miaka 26. And he was 26 years old. Kama mnaniona hapa, the way you see me now, sina mengi ya kuongea. I don't have much to say. Roho yangu inavunjika kabisa. My heart is really deeply broken. Sikuwa najua kama katika hii nchi, I didn't know, I didn't believe that in this country kama kuko genocide that there is a genocide in this country. Sikukua na jua. I didn't know. Sikukua na jua kama apa mwai nchi. I didn't know that here in America. Kuna weza kuwa execsio ya mutu kwa kumuwa. There can be an execution stand to kill someone. Kwa kuwa mutu na jisasi. To kill someone with a gun. Tena uwawe na askari polisi mkubwa. And to be killed by the police officer. Kwa ni ayangu mimi. On my wish now, 
I knew that if you met with a police officer in America, utakuwa umesave maisha yako. You will be safe. Your, your life will be spared. What is making me cry more to see my son? He has been killed by a police officer. For a small, small mistake, fault. Wakati nimeona video hii, by the time when I saw this video, roho yangu kabisa imevunjika. My heart was really deeply broken. Hapa naona kabisa ni maisha yangu sina maisha. Right now I'm seeing that I have no life. My life has come to the end. Maisha yangu ilikuwa tayari ni Patrick mtoto wangu. My life was Patrick, my son. Nilikuwa nawazia Patrick ndo sasa amenigomboa. I was thinking that Patrick will take my place. Alakini kuona kabisa ameuawa unyama na ule askari polisi. And to see that my, my son has been killed like an animal by this police officer. Kwa kweli kwa kuona hii video wametangaza. And to see this video they show. Hapa naona sina maisha nimesikia roho yangu kabisa imevunjika. I, I, I see that I have no life I see my heart being broken. Naomba sheria. I'm asking for justice. Naomba sheria. I'm asking for justice. Naomba sheria. I'm asking for justice. Naomba sheria ya Patrick. I'm asking for justice for Patrick. Naomba sheria ya Patrick. I'm asking justice for Patrick. Patrick ni mtoto wangu mtulivu sana. Patrick was a, a quiet kid. Hakukua na nia ya, ya kugombana au mtu wa vita. Patrick didn't like to fight. He was not a brutal kid. Lakini nimeshangaa kuona office mkubwa yeye ndo anampiganisha Patrick. And I was surprised to see that he was the officer that was really beating Patrick. Tangu Patrick amezaliwa mimi sijaona napigana. Ever since when Patrick grew up and ever see Patrick fight. Lakini hii video ya officer nimeona officer mkubwa amempiganisha Patrick. And I see this officer fighting with my son. Roho yangu imevunjika sana. My heart is broken. Kuona ofisa mkubwa kisa amemwikalia mtoto. I see to see an officer being on top of my son na kumpiga lisasi kwenye kichwa. And to shoot him on the back of his head. Roho yangu imevunjika sana. And my heart is really broken. Naomba sheria jua Patrick. I'm asking justice for Patrick. Thank you so much. Now you hear from his mother, Dolphus. And my name is Dorcas Lioya. I'm the biological mother of Patrick. He is my firstborn. I'm really deeply hurt and wounded. I don't know what to do. I cannot stop myself but for crying. All the mother here, our mother, you know the pain that we go through to have to give birth to a child.